In our final lesson on Chapter 10, we want to consider lipid hormone signaling. In a previous lesson, we saw that hormones could be a variety of substances, metabolites, peptides, portions of peptides, and in some cases, hormones are lipids, that is, very nonpolar substances. And because of this, they can diffuse readily through that membrane barrier. In other words, they don't need a cell surface receptor to bind to. They can simply move through the membrane by passive diffusion. On the screen, we have an illustration of the structure of two of such hormones, thyroxin on the left, one of the thyroid hormones, also referred to as T4 because of the four iodine molecules, and cortisol on the right. As you can see in each case, very nonpolar substances, so they would readily traverse that very nonpolar environment of the membrane. Once inside the cell, that's where they bind to their receptors, and the binding most often causes dimerization of the receptors. Then the hormone receptor complex moves to the nucleus. So now we understand why that hormone crossed the membrane first, because its receptor, its target receptor, is on the inside of the cell. And the receptor is on the inside of the cell because that complex of hormone receptor has to move locations to move inside the nucleus and exert its effects there. At the top of the screen on the right, we have a representation of the hormone receptor complex. The receptor is the green and blue trace, and our hor hormones are the gray spheres. This complex moves to the nucleus, and it binds to certain target sequences within the DNA. Those sequences are referred to as the hormone response elements, because they're elements within the structure of the DNA that respond to the hormone receptor complex. There are two identical DNA sequences. Here we have the DNA double helix. The red portion representing the DNA sequences are highlighted in red, and they're separated by a few base pairs of non-target DNA highlighted in gray. So it's reasonable then that if we have a pair of DNA sequences to recognize, that the protein that's going to recognize them would also be a dimer. And that is true for our receptor. Remember, however, that that receptor cannot bind its target DNA unless it's a dimer, and it can't dimerize unless the ligand binds. So again, it's the binding of the ligand to the receptor that initiates the cascade of events. So each of the monomer within that receptor dimer binds to one of these hormone response elements, and it functions as a transcription factor to, to control gene expression. In other words, it targets certain genes and turns them on so that they are expressed. In another type of hormone signaling, we have eicosanoids. These are synthesized in response to signaling events and so they're made as needed, and that's different from some of the others we've considered. They regulate things such as blood pressure, blood coagulation, inflammation, pain, and fever. They're degraded very quickly, and the effects are limited in time and space, and so unique in that regard. At the bottom of the slide here, we have a picture of an eicosanoid, in this case, arachidonate. That concludes our lessons from Chapter 10. In the next video lesson, we'll start Chapter 11 by consideration of how we can classify carbohydrates.